Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with all of you.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theopolis, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times nor the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Epiphysians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe in accordance with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son so that your Son may give glory to you. Just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you the only true God, and that you should know the one whom he sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory I had with you, before the world began. And then Jesus went on and prayed, Father, I revealed your name to those who gave, you gave to me out of the world. They belong to you and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you because the words you gave to me I have given to them and they have accepted them and truly understood that I came from you and that they have believed 
that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray as the world does, but I pray for the ones you have given to me because they are yours and everything that is mine is yours and everything of yours is mine and I have been glorified in them. Now, I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. In this gospel passage this morning, Jesus is praying. He's praying for the whole world. He's praying for you, for me. He's praying for the people of Texas, people of Chicago, the people of Ukraine. He's praying for all of us. And you're here this morning to pray, to connect with God, to communicate with God. And Jesus prays many times in the Gospels. He prayed early in the morning and he prayed late at night. He prayed privately. He prayed publicly. He prayed at the Last Supper. He prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus prayed when he healed the blind man, when he touched the leper, when he healed the deaf man, when he healed the lame man. Jesus prayed often. Jesus prayed at the wedding feast of Cana. Jesus prayed and touched those who were sick, diseased, possessed. And Jesus, too, we know from the scriptures, walked through the dusty roads of Palestine. He visited homes, villages, and all the while, he's praying. He's casting out devils. He's healing the sick, connecting with the blind. So Jesus set great value in prayer and we see him this morning praying for us and the whole world Jesus knew it wasn't easy to pray Jesus knew that praying demanded great discipline from the human person and times it was with great difficulty the human person can pray. Jesus knew at times there would be great distractions, great emptiness, great inner hollowness. But nevertheless, Jesus would encourage us to pray without ceasing. In fact, the great mystic Julian of Norwich, uh, an English mystic, would say that often when we pray, we see nothing, we hear nothing, we feel nothing. But she says, pray anyway. So it may be difficult, you may have lots of distractions, when you go to prayer, 
You may have lots of temptations, but we pray always, often. She even says that sometimes the prayer where we're experiencing most emptiness and hollowness and distraction, that's the prayer, she says, that pleases God more than anything else. We need prayer. Prayer is good for you. It's good for your soul. It's perhaps the best use of your time to pray. And we talk about prayer, we're essentially talking about connecting with God. You can have a formula or no formula. You can have many words, few words. Or you can have no words. You can sit quietly in wonder, in awe, in admiration, in quietness. Prayer. Many ways to pray. Well, what's important is to pray. And Jesus this morning models for us how to connect with the Father how to connect with God. It's good for you. Prayer helps when nothing else helps. When no one else can help you, prayer helps. Tuning into God, your maker, creator, your redeemer, helps. Worry doesn't help, prayer helps. Anxiety doesn't help, prayer helps. Fear doesn't help, prayer helps. Sadness doesn't help, prayer helps. Depression doesn't help, prayer helps. Anger doesn't help. Prayer helps. Blaming doesn't help. Prayer helps. Complaining doesn't help. Prayer helps. And St. Paul in one of his writings would say, pray always. You know, last Thursday we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension. Essentially that means that God in his physicality is no longer visible or touchable. But God has not deserted us, has not forgotten us, has not for lost interest in us. God is very present. And we come here every Sunday morning to have an intense encounter with God. And what we bring into church may have a lot to do with what we experience in church. Think about that. God is in this place. God is present. God is in the turmoil of your life. God is in Ukraine and Texas and Chicago. God is where the suffering is and where the pain is and the hurt is. God is with us. His spirit is with us. Let's bow our heads for a moment and Go inside and journey into your own heart. And pray. Ask for our veterans. Those who have died given their lives the ultimate sacrifice for us. 
for our freedom, for our protection, for our safety. We pray for them this morning. We remember them. And again, as we remember in a very intense, urgent way, the people of Texas and Chicago and Ukraine, all people who are struggling, who don't feel safe, we pray as Jesus prayed for them in our gospel reading this morning. For I believe in one God. Our response is, merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to find Jesus in the church, may we know him in the gathering of the community, in the word proclaimed, in the sharing of Holy Communion, for the grace to help the church grow in service to others, we pray. For the grace to find Jesus in those who have been giving to who have been given to love. May we know him in our families, our friends, those charged in our care, and those who care for us, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayers. For the grace to find Jesus in our work, may we know him in all our efforts and projects, our plans and opportunities. For the grace to find Jesus in everyone we meet, may we know him in those who ask for our help, those who attend to our needs, and all those placed in our path, we pray. For the grace to heed the call, to stop looking up at the sky, and to create the kingdom in our midst. For Pope Francis, for length of days in the service to God's people, as he embraces the commission to preach the kingdom and for hearts to be moved to consider the consecrated and ordained life, we pray. For the grace to find Jesus in our struggles, for those who are sick, for the eradication of the coronavirus, on this Memorial Day weekend, we ask for peace in the world, especially the Ukraine, and for the end of the senseless gun violence, we pray. We pray for all those who have died in the service of others. We also pray for those who have died, especially Jerry, Jerry Heidberger and
Joe Mariano, who are being remembered during this Mass. Also, please remember those who have died recently, especially Elizabeth Tilly and the victims of the elementary school shooting in Texas, we pray. a few announcements. Our announcements, since we are entering into the busy summer season, we have a need for donor greeters at every Mass so that our visitors feel welcome. If you are interested in being part of this very important ministry, please call the parish office and leave your name, email address, phone number, and which mass you would like you would be interested in. Someone will call you back. Thank you. The United States Catholic Charities three-year Eucharistic revival is about ready to get underway in an effort to remind, reteach, and reign and invigorate faith in the Eucharist. In the Diocese of Camden, the Eucharistic Revival will kick off Saturday, June the 18th with a candlelight procession with a blessed sacrament on the Atlantic City Boardwalk. Beginning at 8 p.m., Dennis Sullivan, our bishop, will lead nearly 1,000 faithful from across the diocese in a three-quarter mile procession from Tennessee Avenue and the boardwalk to Kennedy Plaza. Pastors in the Diocese of Camden are being encouraged to send at least 10 parishioners to officially represent their parish in the Atlantic City procession. If interested, please call the office and leave your name and contact information. People have to have a relationship with Jesus in order to be open to receiving Jesus through the Eucharist. Please take home a bulletin for all pertinent information concerning our parish activities. Thank you.
pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept our prayers this day and grant that through this holy exchange of gifts we may one day reach our heavenly home through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty, it is our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For Jesus is the King of glory. He is the conqueror of sin and death. By ascending to the heavenly hosts, he has allowed us to gaze on his wonder. He is the mediator between God and man. He is the judge of the world, and he is the Lord of all. He ascended not to distance himself from us, but that where he has gone, we might to follow. And so with all the choirs of angels, we acclaim. holy. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave the bread to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial 
of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And renew, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, clergy, religious laity. And Lord, remember all those who have died, those who have asked us to pray for them, and for Michael and Joseph and all our deceased and all those who have died in your mercy, Lord. Welcome them into the light of your face. And Lord, have mercy on all of us. Make all of us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, Lord, keep us free from sin and violence and destruction and war as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I leave with you. Look not on our sins, Lord. Look on the faith of your church. And grant us your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Offer one another sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Eat my body, drink my blood, and you will have life forever.